Google Drawings is a great program to use to create drag and drop assignments as well as a variety of other things where you can create templates and a combination of images and text for students to either fill in themselves or to be able to um, read and access information that way. Today what I'm going to show you how to do is how to make a drag and drop assignment using Google Drawings. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need a bigger area to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to page setup and I'm going to change the size. I can do this on any of the Google programs. So if I want to change my PowerPoint and make it a larger area or a smaller area. For example, we changed it on for one class to be the size of the standard CD insert. So all I have to do is come down here and I'm going to say I want widescreen for this. Click OK and now I've got a larger area to work with. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working with a Northern Europe map. And so I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to see if it's big enough. I might need to make a custom size for this and make this even bigger. So because I want to insert an image, I can go up here to insert image or on the toolbar I can also click right here. Both take me to the same place. So I can use a variety of different ways to get this. So if I wanted to take a screenshot, I don't. But if I did, I could get one right here. If you know the URL for a picture, you could get it that way. You might also have albums if it's stored to your Google Drive. I could also search and find pictures that are free for me to use. But I know what I want to use here and it's saved to my computer. So what I need to do is I need to go to pictures and I'm going to look for my Northern Europe map. In fact, to make it a bit faster, I'll just type that in. So when I look at this, I can see this is going to take up pretty much most of my space. And I don't want to make this too small for students. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back here, page setup. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to custom. So I'm fine with the height of it, but I want it to be larger. So I'm going to try making this 16. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to create my directions. So I want that to be colored. So I'm going to add a rectangle over here. Have it overlap with this. I can change what color I want it to be. So maybe I want this to be a light green. Let's do a border of the same color. And now I want to start typing in it. So I want to put directions. Now it's going to show up at the middle. I can then move that up by just pressing enter several times. So I'll do that when I'm finished. Okay, so my directions are good. Now what I want to do is over here, I want to create another area. Make this one light blue for the water. And in here, I'm going to put my different countries, capitals, bodies of water, land formations. So I'm going to put them over here. So I want little rectangles for that. We'll say countries are going to be a pink color. I'm going to resize that. This map's not very big, so I and I don't want to make the text too large. So I'm going to keep them at about this size. Looks like I'm going to need a smaller font size. And here I want them all to be the same size, so I might as well just copy and paste. So here I'm just pressing Control V to copy them. You'll notice these little red lines come and help me make sure they're aligned. It's not overly important, but it does make it look nicer. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to go and change the names. I double click on it and I can change it. I have all of my countries on here. Now I'm just going to finish that and repeat this for the same process for the cities, the bodies of water, and land formations. 
Okay, so now I have, just using boxes and copy and paste, I have all of the different things that students need to be able to find and label on this map. So I could take this a step further. If, say, I wanted them to drag these countries to a specific spot, it's kind of hard for them to know on the map where exactly should Iceland go. It goes somewhere over here, but they might put it here. They might put it right here. Maybe it's here. Because there's other things they have to label on this. They also need to put the capital Reykjavik over by the star for the capital city. So if I want them to put it in a specific spot, then what I should do is just go through and I can make a copy of this. I can take the pink box, delete the text. So if I want to do that though, you'll notice if I just drag it over and I want to put it directly on top, the text isn't going to show. So what I have to do then for all of these is I need to order all of these boxes, the ones I'm going to drag, I need to click on them and bring to the front. And all of these that they would be dragging to, I would need to send backward. I don't want to send it to the back because that would put it behind the map. But I want to send it backward. If I do that, then this will show up. Otherwise, it's just going to be a blank pink box because by default, Iceland's going to go behind that labeling box. So that's an option if you want them going to specific places. You also don't have to, like I chose to color code the different countries. Especially when they're starting, I find that helpful. But later on, I might want them to just be able to figure out where do these things go regardless of color. I don't want to give them that extra clue. So I could easily go back and make a version of this where these are all white. So for that, I just click on whatever I want to change. I change them all white or whatever color I want them all to be. But that way I could easily make them all the same color. Now the one thing that you need to be cautious of with something like this, because this is an interactive activity, we want all of our kids working with this. So we need to make sure that we have gone through and made it available to them. Now you could go through the classic share and get a shareable link, give everyone access to it, and then they could go through and they can make a copy. But it's going to be far easier because you're going to have kids who why isn't it moving? And so they're panicking because hopefully you have shared it on view only mode. If you made the mistake of having it on edit mode, they would all change yours. So please be very careful with that because you don't want them all changing the master and possibly messing that up. But if you come up here and you go change this from edit to copy, what you'll notice when I press enter is now they have to make a copy. So it forces anyone to make a copy. You don't have to deal with all the questions about why can't it move or people trying, forgetting to go to make a copy. It just automatically did that as soon as they went to that page and they clicked make a copy. So now you have all the students in your class working on the same assignment really quickly and it's not messing anyone else's up. So they can drag their countries, they can drag their cities to wherever they need to go.